What's up everyone? Jeremiah here from Babbling My Backyard. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to pick the proper pump. I've been asked this question several times on some of my other videos, but I decided it's been a question that's come up enough that I might as well just make a video for it. So we're going to show you today four examples of picking a pump. So I've got the example of the pond, my big pond here. I've got a stream in the front with a couple pools that will go, go over picking the pump for that one. I've got the heated tank that has the filtration system, the barrel filter that some of you may have seen. And then I've got a fountain feature that we'll look at as well. But before I do that, I want to talk about some of the things that we need to be aware of that will cause loss of flow. So one of the things that causes loss is pipe size. So as I decrease my pipe size, I will lose flow rate. If I decrease the pipe size, I also am increasing pressure. The other thing that you have to be aware of is bends. So like in here, this situation, I've got this 90 degree and I've got another 90 degree and another 90 degree. Uh, these 90 degrees will cause a loss in flow. It creates friction in the line, so it reduces your flow. So sometimes you'll use like a 45 instead of a 90 so that you can eliminate some of that loss. And then the biggest one is obviously how high are you pumping? So the higher you're pumping, the more you're gonna lose flow rate. So when we talk about head height, we're talking about the water level up. So the distance from here to there. So in this example, all of these pumps are gonna be the same size. And if I have to pump up four feet from the water level to where it's gonna flow out. So if these pumps are all a 5,000 gallon, gallon per hour, that 5,000 gallons per hour would be as if it were just flowing to here. Uh, that's a rare situation. So usually you're gonna lose some of this just from the head height. So your pump will come with some sort of a chart. In this example, this is the closest to a 5,000 gallon per hour. So as I increase my head height, I will be losing volume. In this situation, if I gotta go four feet, I'm going to reduce from my 5,000 pretty quickly there to first line, gonna be probably right in here. So I've went from 5,000 to 3,800 in just this example here. So now I gotta go eight feet to the water line. So if I've gotta now flow up through that same line eight feet, I'm now coming over here and I'm following this down until I'm around eight feet. This is 9.8, so I'm gonna be somewhere right in here, the middle of that. So right in the middle somewhere is in here. So I'm gonna be somewhere in like the 2,600 gallons per hour. So I've lost another almost 1,000 uh, gallons per hour moving to the eight foot. Now, if I were to use that same 5,000 gallon per hour with a one inch line, these numbers don't even mean anything anymore. What they say is that a two inch line, the max flow that a two inch line can, can put out is 7,600 gallons per hour. So the 5,000 gallons is even pushing that two inch line. I could go larger two and a half inch line and then I'm gonna increase even more volume. So if I've got a bigger pump, I'm going to have to even go bigger than two inch. Now, if I go to a one inch line, the max a one inch line can do is 2,200 gallons per hour. If I'm running a 5,000 gallon per hour pump, I'm limiting myself to 2,200 gallons per hour through that pipe, no matter what. That, this is when that pressure builds because it's pushing, trying to push a lot more volume through a smaller line. But this the head pressure still works the same way. Even though we've got four feet, uh, I'm gonna lose some of this 
out of the top of this just because of the head pressure. And I'll even more lose it out of the whole eight feet. Okay, so for the pond example, the amount of flow that I wanted coming out of my waterfall isn't extreme. So I have a 5,000 gallon per hour pump on that system. So from the water level to here is usually only two feet. And then from the next step up and over, I have another four feet there. So total, I'm only going up about six feet. The length is really long. So there is that part, but the height is only about four feet. The thing is, is when I do have a long run, I do have to start calculating in how much that run is going to affect my pressure loss because of friction. And the rule is every 10 feet, add another foot to your head and you'll be good. So um, if I have 20 feet of line here, which is what I have, I need to add two more feet of head. So I had six feet of head plus this equivalent of two feet giving me a total of eight feet. And this isn't even including the 45. So I've got two 45s there, another 45 here, and a couple 45s before I even get to this point. So those 45s are also going to cause me to lose some pressure. But knowing that I'm going eight feet with this 5,000 gallon pump, so I'm probably more like nine feet so I'm up in here. I'm really only getting around 2200 gallons per hour flowing out of this thing by the end of it all. If I were to go to the larger pump here I would have had to increase my wattage almost double. So if you see I'm only running 280 watts I would have had to run up to 550 watts and I'd I really didn't want to do that to my electrical bill. So, but if I would have been running this one, the same height, head height, I would be somewhere around 3,800 gallons per hour, which would still flow through there. And it probably, it's closer to what I actually was wanting to get, but I'm actually happy that I didn't get that much because it's, the flow is kind of perfect right now. I think it'd be way louder if it was up in that 3,800 range. Okay, now to the IBC tote and filter build. This is the one that I get the questions about the most. How, what size pump should I use for this filter? And it's, it's not the filter that we're worried about so much as how high from your water level to your output. On this pump that I'm running in this system, which a lot of you guys have seen, I am running a pump that's way larger than I need to. I'll show it to you here. So it's recommended that it's running on a two inch line and I'm only running that on a one and a half inch out of there. And then I further reduce it to the one inch line before I go into the filtration system. And I'm, I'm constraining this on purpose. I could have went from one inch out of the pump all the way over. I just had the one and a half inch line. I wanted a lot of flow in this thing, but I could be achieving the same amount of flow with a smaller pump. I just happened to have this pump already, so I didn't need to go get another pump. In my case, I'm only like maybe a foot, so it's not much. It's, it's really close from the top of the water to where my water comes back in. Now I've got this line that's coming up four feet, but it comes up all the way through the water. So the water, the pump has to push it past the water and up over and then the, the down part doesn't matter it's gravity is, makes that easy i do reduce the pipe size and then it's got to go back up through here and out but that's the same level so really if if i let everything settle and i wasn't running the pump all of the water would settle in the filter until it was there because they would equalize so what i'm saying is that all the pump has to do is then push it this much higher 
And because I am running a higher pressure, and there's still more volume getting through, it's still even at that 2,200 gallons per hour. What is, it's definitely getting that much, which isn't gonna flow freely through a two inch line. So that's why I have double two inches. And then even if something gets clogged, I have the backup one inch lines that would drain out as well. Now, what can I get away with here then? If I'm only going to a one inch line, if I want that same amount of flow, if I could get away with a smaller pump. Even at a 3,000 gallons per hour, if I'm only going a foot, still getting me really close here. Um, I might have some angles, which these 90 degrees are all gonna create friction and reduce my flow, so I might have some loss there. But I'm still gonna beat that 2200 that uh, is allowed to go through that one inch, and I won't have any problems with something smaller. I could probably use a 2,500 gallons per hour in my situation, maybe even 2,000 gallons per hour, and it would still flow pretty well. If this IBC tote's only about 250 gallons worth of water because it's a 375 total, and I don't fill it up all the way, if it's only about 250 gallons of water, then I'm turning that water very quickly, which is what I want because I will heavy fish load it, and I'm really feeding them a ton. I feed those fish in there seven times a day so that they get a lot of growth. So I'm creating a lot of waste in this system and I, I need it to be turning fast. In this case, I'm talking about this fountain that I'm refurbing. The rebuild video for this is coming soon. When I have it, it'll be up in the corner. I have a smaller pump, a smaller reservoir, and I've got to pump up through the rock. From the water edge to the top of that rock, it's not more than three feet. So whatever I'm picking for this pump, it's, I don't want the, the head height to shoot out a bunch more than that. And I've only got like a three quarter inch line running in here. So at a three quarter inch line, I'm able to kick out 1400 gallons per hour. Now I do not want 1400 gallons per hour flowing out of this guy. So I need to pick a pump that's going to actually uh, have this head height of three feet affect it drastically. I probably don't want any more than a hundred gallons an hour coming out of the top of this. I just want it bubbling over. An easier thing to do would be to stick a ball valve right here on the pump so that I can adjust it. So if I do get even a 500 gallon per hour and it's still at three quarter inch would blow too much water out the top of this thing. I can adjust that ball valve down, limiting what the pump can push through, and then allow for the bubbling that I want, and I can get real precise with it. Even as the pump starts to wear, I can just turn the ball valve up a little bit and get a little bit more flow. And finally, we're gonna talk about the stream in the front of the house. For this one, I have, from the bottom, I have probably four foot up, and then it's pretty level across here. There's another four feet total to the top. So my pump is sitting in that bottom pool and I'm using a one inch line and I believe this is a 2,500 gallon per hour. So I'm running a one inch line up so I know that I can't get more than 2,200 gallons per hour. I don't get a lot of flow rate, but I'm not looking for a lot of flow rate. I get a nice sound as you can see right here. That's all the more that I really need from the water level to the top up here. I only have about three feet. And then from here up to here is another three feet total. It runs this way and then it goes up another little joggle, but this is where I'm measuring from. So total of six feet. Now the distance is pretty significant. It's probably about 30 feet this time total. So I've got 30 foot of length, which means that every 10 foot is another one foot of head. So I've got three feet. So I got a total of nine foot of head pressure, not including my elbows. I'll lose a little bit more from that. So in this situation, I have a 2,500 gallon per hour pump and it is pushing up roughly 10 feet. Plus I have some extra bends. I've got 90 degrees, which are really gonna slow things down. I would be guessing that I'm not getting more than 1,500 gallons per hour, but this 
2500 would only apply if I were using the largest pipe that it suggests. The pipe that this pump suggests is a one and a half inch line. I only have a one inch line on it, so I've already reduced the amount of flow that I can get through because I don't have as much pressure that the pump is creating to get to the max. I would be guessing that the most that I'm getting out of this pump with this length and this height is only about 1500 gallons per hour. So hopefully this pick a pump video helps you determine what pump you should be getting for whatever your job is. If it doesn't, you can either leave a message down in the comments below and I'll further help you or head over to my Instagram page and message me over there. I'm probably more likely to respond quicker if you message me on there versus the comments because I only get to the comments every so often. But uh, yeah, if you need more help, I'm willing to help. So check out more videos.